Coach Tony, wrestling podium performance. And today we're diving into this one habit that you may have that is completely sabotaging your health and fitness, weight loss and fat loss goals. So you might be wondering, what am I doing wrong? Well, liquid calories is the answer. What do I mean by this? I'm talking about alcoholic drinks and sugary and sweet drinks. How are these sabotaging you? First, we're gonna look at the alcoholic drinks. A standard drink, for example, is 14 grams of alcohol. Now, what we don't realize is that that 14 grams of alcohol must be used up first by the body. It has to remove it from the body before it uses carbs for energy or fats for energy, which means these are gonna be stored. Also, for every one gram of alcohol you take in, it is roughly seven kilocalories of energy. So that means a standard drink is gonna be 98 kilocalories or calories that you have to burn off before you even start to tap into anything else that you've consumed. And let's be honest, most people when they drink alcohol, they're not having a standard drink, especially if they're making their drink at home. Unless of course you're taking a beer out of the, a, a can or a bottle of beer out of the fridge, you have a pre-mixed drink already that is already pre-made, it's bottled or canned, and you're drinking that, and you're only having one. Let's be honest though, if you're mixing your own drinks, you're pouring your own glass of wine, most likely you are not having a standard drink. You're gonna be having, oh, just a little bit more, because who gets a jigger out to measure one ounce of alcohol? Who measures exactly eight ounces of wine? Barely anybody. You pour until it looks about right. You pour until it tastes about right. So you're actually gonna be over consuming right there. And let's also keep in mind, a lot of drinks, whether it's gonna be your mixed drinks or beer especially, are gonna have carbs that come with it. Either from adding sugar, adding other ingredients, adding sweetener, adding creamers. Beer itself has a lot of carbs in it, whether it's made with uh, hops, barley, or wheat, it's gonna have some carbs that come with it, which means you're increasing the caloric intake from it. And because it's in a liquid form, it's very easy to just consume. If it's a hot summer day, for example, we're now into summer in the Northern Hemisphere, you're gonna have a very easy time having that second beer, that second drink, because you're sweating, it's cold, it feels good to down it. I'm not saying you have to completely cut it out in life, but if your number one goal health and fitness wise, is fat or weight loss, cutting out alcoholic drinks is only gonna serve you beneficially, just from a caloric point of view. Now let's take a look at some other reasons why alcohol is sabotaging your results. Well, one thing about alcohol is the ethanol in it is actually a neuro and body toxin. It's literally toxic to our bodies. That's why we get drunk and have hangovers. It's our body, being poisoned essentially. So the main things that it really hits is gonna be your brain, think about getting drunk and a hangover, as well as your liver. We know empirically, we know from a scientific point of view that people who drink excessively or even frequently and consistently are at a higher risk for fatty liver disease. This means your liver is no longer functioning properly and it actually has extra fat attached to it. The other thing that alcohol causes is systemic inflammation. We just said it is a poison, which means that our body is going to react to that. Some people are even either minorly or severely allergic to alcohol. If they're allergic, well, that's a death sentence for them just having it potentially. But it also causes inflammation throughout our body and this inflamed and these inflamed tissues end up not working as efficiently. So if you're talking about your metabolism and your body's ability to utilize energy, either from breaking down fat stores or taking carbohydrates within the body, breaking it down into glucose and using it for energy, you're no longer as efficient at doing it, which means you're not using as much as you normally would. This coupled with inflammation is gonna then lead down the road to increased risk of other diseases, plus that added inflammation makes it harder for the body to burn and utilize and lose fat that you have, which makes losing weight and losing fat harder for the body. All right, so the other side of the liquid calories is 
sweet and sugary drinks. Now, yes, a lot of alcoholic drinks can be lumped in with this, whether it's mixed drinks or even certain uh, sweetened drinks that you can buy either pre-made or make at home at, or at the bar. But in this case, I'm gonna be talking about those sweet coffees people like, your caramel macchiatos, for example. We're gonna be taking a look as well at the category of sodas or pop, whatever, whatever it's called where you are. So first, a lot of people that work out in the morning, they don't necessarily have a coffee beforehand, or if they do, they have that coffee. But on their way into work, as part of our culture, as part of our just routine, a lot of people are gonna stop at a coffee shop, whether it's here in Canada at like Tim Hortons or uh, around the world at Starbucks or their local more artisan type coffee shop. A lot of people aren't just gonna get a black coffee. They're gonna go and they're gonna get a coffee with some sugar and or some creamers added in. And then some people are also gonna add in all these other add-ons like, oh, let's get some whipped cream. Why? Oh, it tastes good. Oh, let's add in this syrup that gives it a different taste. Remember, I just mentioned caramel macchiato. Coffee does not taste like a caramel macchiato. That requires a sweetener, a syrup, whether an artificial sweetener or a natural sweetener in the form typically of a simple syrup made from sugar. How does this sabotage you though? Well, if you just expended say 200 calories in your workout, now you just go to the coffee shop and you get a coffee, a large coffee for example, because everyone likes to get a big coffee. And that coffee, for example, you've just added in 20 grams of sugar. Whoa. All of a sudden, you just added in 80 calories to make it taste a little bit better. Add in some whipped cream. There's another 90 calories. Oh, we're already at 170 calories, which is making our goal of being in a net deficit calorically to lose fat and lose weight. We've now made it so that that deficit went from 200 to 30, which means it's now gonna take us almost 10 times as long to lose the same amount of weight. Just with that one simple sabotage hack that just happened. Easy way to beat this, get your coffee black. Yes, it's gonna taste bitter. You will get over it in a week or two. Or be kind of crazy like I am and just wake up with this energy every day and not need any coffee. Most people, I don't recommend it because your coworkers deserve better as does your family. But for those who don't need to have any coffee or caffeine in the morning, just get up and go. Get the day going. Have a high protein breakfast and get going. Now other sugary drinks that sabotage a lot of people, sodas, pops. We're looking, we're looking at that category of your Mountain Dews, Dr. Peppers, Pepsi, Coca-Cola. What is it about these? They typically have about 40 grams of sugar per serving. Well, right there, that's 160 calories. So if you had a great workout, 200 calories expended, you're in a net deficit as well when you add in your diet of your 500 kilocalories less than maintenance, and you just threw in 160 calories from a single Pepsi or Coke. Well, now you just reduced that deficit. And say that workout was 200 calories, and in the morning you had that coffee, that was another 170 calories. Well, that's 330 calories that are no longer a deficit. Now they are back in you. So your deficit went from throughout the day between diet and exercise of 500 calories to 170. And that's if you're keeping everything else perfectly strict and not going over anywhere. So that 170 calories, you just cut your progress down to a third. So it's now gonna take you three times longer to lose the same weight. That is why liquid calories are the number one self-sabotage habit that people have. Whether it's from alcoholic drinks, where you have to use the alcohol first and it's a bit of a poison to our bodies, or sugary sweet drinks that are hyper palatable, easy to consume lots of, that are setting you back on the road to your results and your progress. My job, I want people to hit their goals. But 
I can't always stop you from self-sabotaging. I'd like to, but to give you the tools of knowing where you might be self-sabotaging is how I can help you. Now you hear people say, diet drinks are just as bad. If we're looking at improving your health as quickly as possible and improving and still allowing you to enjoy certain things, you just want that bit of that sweet taste, a diet soda, a diet pop is going to be much better for you than the regular alternative. Getting a mocktail, a zero alcohol drink is going to be better for you. So making these simple, short, little substitutions can set you up for success. I'm not saying you have to cut everything out, but remember, if your goal is fat loss and weight loss and improving your health, cutting them out completely will be the best for you. In a pragmatic sense and taking a look at the real world, making some simple substitutions can still allow you to get to your goals and your, achieve them quickly. If your goal is performance, sport performance, cut alcohol out altogether. It reduces your ability to recover, it reduces your ability to perform. If you just want to lose weight and lose fat, make simple substitutions, still enjoy life, and be able to still be social with your friends and family. So this one self-sabotage habit is what might be holding you back from achieving your goals and dreams. Coach Tony, wrestling, putting performance, embrace your potential.